morning. Hi. Welcome to worship here at Asylum Hill Congregational Church, an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ. It is so wonderful to have you all here this morning. Whether you are worshiping at 814 Asylum Avenue, you are joining us via live stream, or you are catching the recording of this later in the day or the week, please know that our worship service is really only what it is because each and every one of you are a part of it. As a reminder, friends, if you have prayer requests to share with us, we want to know. We want to know what is on your heart. You can visit our website, ahcc.org, to send in a prayer request. Um, you can also, when you go to our website, take a moment to sign in. We want to know who you are. We want to know, um, you can sign in now. You can sign in later when you get home, but we want to know who is joining us. This is a wonderful way for us to stay connected with you and with each other. And we hope that you have already liked us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are posting lots of stuff. We've got a lot of things going on in this holiday season and we don't want you to miss anything. You will also find on our YouTube channel recordings, recordings of worship services in case you miss something and some of our programming. You can catch the recordings there. We also want to make sure that you have signed up for our Friday emails. This is the way that we are making sure that you all know what is going on and what you can get involved with. Um, thank you. Thank you to everyone who played a part in our Thanksgiving community meal that happened this past Thursday. Whether you were there volunteering physically, you donated food, donated the funds for us to purchase food, or were just praying and thinking about us. We served our community and it was a beautiful day to sit outside and share some time together. And friends, today, one o'clock, we're doing it again. Every Sunday at 1 p.m., we serve a free community meal out in our parking lot. If you would like to volunteer and be a part of that or just get some more information, you can reach out to me or our volunteer coordinator, Kyle Cannon, or check out our website. So if you didn't already know or already guess, Advent begins today, and we are very excited to enter into this beautiful season with you all. So Advent boxes, if you ordered one of those for yourself or someone else, those are ready to be picked up. You can pick them up today after worship until, I believe it's one o'clock. Um, or anytime the church office is open, you can pick up your Advent boxes. Poinsettia orders are due today, and next Sunday is the due date for Angel Tree gift cards. And we have a lot of amazing worship services and, and programming coming up, so please, again, check out our website or check your Friday email. Friends, thank you for joining us on this journey as we draw closer to God and draw closer to each other. Let us enter our hearts and minds into a time of worship together. Please rise either in body or in spirit and join in our responsive call to worship. Can we be homesick for something we've never known? We are homesick for a just world, for peace like a river, for the end of suffering. We are homesick for joy that is contagious, 
for nations that feel like neighbors, and for hospitals that run empty. We are homesick for the world God promises. We are homesick, but we are on our way. God is here. God is still creating. Let us worship God together. You may be seated. We hope for a world where all are fed. We hope for a world with more bridges than walls. We hope for a world with wide open doors. We hope for a world with contagious laughter. We hope for a world where trees grow tall and creeks run clean. We hope for a world where all people feel at home, in their bodies, in the church, in their physical homes. We hope for that world. We long for that world. Today we light the candle of hope because hope keeps our hearts alive as we wait. Friends, in celebrating the family of the church, perhaps 
No other event is as poignant as the celebration of life through the sacrament of baptism. Baptism is an outward sign declaring the inner presence of God and God's unconditional love for the human family. Acknowledging this important gift requires a commitment from parents and family and the church to give of our lives so that all might live more abundantly and experience the fullness that life can be. And so now I would invite Zara Marie Biederman forward and if you would bring your parents and your loved ones so that we might engage in the sacrament of baptism together. so people can see you. Excellent. Friends, Jesus calls us to welcome children into the full life of our community, opening our tables and our hearts to those most vulnerable, offering the wisdom of the ages to all who hunger for truth. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support and care to this child being baptized as they live and grow in Christian community. We promise our love, support, and, and care. care. We know that baptism, that baptism involves commitments, vows. So now I ask you as parents, will you dedicate yourselves to do all you can to provide Zara with roots so that she may feel safe and wings so that she may fly? Will you strive to share with her the beauty and the goodness of life? If so, please say we will with the help of God. Will you promise to care for Zara, to love her with all your heart and soul? Will you raise her to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God? Will you extend her both kindness and courage? If so, please say we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. And will you honor, will you honor Zara's uniqueness and encourage her to live her dreams? Will you teach her to honor the faith questions that belong to her throughout her life? Will you journey with her to discover the wonder of our Creator's love made manifest here today. If so, please say we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. And to you, Zara's godparents, will you care? Do you promise to care for Zara, to love her with all of your heart and soul? Will you help this family to raise Zara, to do justice, love mercy, and live with compassion? Will you play with this family? and pray with this family? And will you encourage them to each live out their dreams? If so, we, will you please say, we will with the help of God. And this is an act of the congregation as well. Do you, the people who re represent Asylum Hill Congregational Church, promise to support this family Provide them a place to grow in Christian love and discipleship and walk the journey of faith with them wherever it may lead. If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Let us declare together our commitment to this child. We promise, promise to, to be, be the, the best, best examples, examples we can, can be opening our own hearts and tables to the most vulnerable, working to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Zara, we promise to delight in your accomplishments, share in your sorrows, and encourage you in every way as you grow into adulthood. 
we will partner with you to find the God-given talents and abilities that have been instilled in you as you find your way in life. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> That's after. <laughs> We appreciate your zealousness. <laughs> if we might pray together. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation known to us in water and word. Before the world took shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. And out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Moses, the people of Israel passed through the waters of the Red Sea from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. You have come to us through water in the stories of Jesus, nurtured in the water of Mary's womb, baptized by John in the Jordan River, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well and washed the feet of the disciples and sent them forth to baptize with water and spirit. Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. Bless all who touch and taste this water that it may be ever a reminder of your abiding presence and your claim on our lives. It is in your holy name we pray. Amen. Are you excited? <laughs> Are you excited? Excellent. Sarah, can, can I hold you? Can I hold you? Oh, yes, we get to play in the water. Yeah. yeah. By what name shall this child be baptized? Zara Marie. <laughs> Zara Marie. I baptize you in the name of God, our creator, by the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our savior, and our friend. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, may you always be proud of this, your day of baptism, and may you grow into a woman after God's very own heart. Now we can pray. <laughs> God of wonder and grace, we thank, we thank you for, for your love revealed here in this day. As this community, these parents, and this child come together making covenant promises. We pray that this community will have the grace to uphold the promises made here this day, for providing a safe shelter of your love in which this child may grow and play. We pray that these parents may continue to feel the sweet wonder of your presence so transparent here today. We pray that this child will bask in your love as they make their own journey through life. Amen. And we will sing here the words, Jesus loves her. This we know. Jesus loves her. This we know. Friends, you may have missed it, but as we were praying together, 
Zara looked over and put her fingers in the water. Today, as we celebrate the first Sunday in Advent, a Sunday where we draw near to wonder, we look at this child and imagine the world in which she wonders about all that God is placing upon her heart, and we give thanks. Amen. As we approach this time of prayer, let us remember those in our family of faith who need our love and attention and needs God's compassion and care. We pray for continued healing for Ida Schoenwolf. We ask for God's comfort and peace to be with Susan Porta and her family. And today we grieve with Nora Alcid and her family upon the death of her sister, Rebecca. And we grieve also with the family and friends of Fred Sargent, who passed away on Sunday. We pray for justice for all who are affected by violence and hate, and especially as we enter into this holiday season, we pray for all who have suffered losses, and we pray especially for parents who have lost children to any cause. And during this time of prayer, we recognize that prayer is a form of poetry, and poetry sometimes is a form of prayer. 
we can express our deepest wishes, our curiosities, our observations and griefs and longings in poetry, and God is present in that. I will begin our pastoral prayer with a poem about wonder written by Sarah R. Let us enter into a spirit of prayer. I wonder if the earth is waiting for a Messiah like I am. Trees bending toward love, fireflies keeping a promise to be light. The moon returning over and over again with hope that the world will look differently this time. I wonder if I'll ever really know when it happens those moments when God is in my midst, those all the time, everywhere, rare kind of moments that I'm terrible at trusting, but know like a rainstorm. I wonder because I am human. I wonder because not wondering leaves me stuck. And I cannot be stuck in a world that separates children from parents women from their bodies, and men from their emotions. So I wonder, will the stars ever fall? Will I see you face to face and you see me? Will the moon come back tonight and sigh, saying, ah, yes, I can see that God is here. This is what I have been waiting for. God of grace and compassion, help us to interpret our questions and uncertainty and unknowing as wonder and awe and curiosity. Open our hearts and spirits to the miracles of your love and generosity, of your justice and compassion. Help us to trust that you are here in the beauty of our creation, in the kindness of strangers, in the joy of seeing family and friends. We pray for the church. Keep us alert and watchful in support of one another. Guard us from everything false and untrue and empower us to be your hands and feet in the world. We pray for the people of the world, for all those living with injustice, poverty, violence, anxiety, or depression. Provide them your comfort and love. We pray for the nations. Provide your leaders wisdom and grace. Help to bring peace and justice to all people. Provide your healing to those nations affected by violence or instability or illness. We ask, God of all, that you help us be mindful of the needs of others and continually move us toward generosity forgiveness and grace as this Christmas season unfolds. Lord, stand by those who wake or watch or weep. Provide rest to those who are weary, soothe those who suffer, and come now to those we name silently in our hearts in this moment. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we enter into a time of offering, I am reminded of the many wonderful things that this church has been doing. We have been serving meals, supporting each other, worshiping God, teaching our children about God's love and inclusion, supporting local agencies and nonprofits, studying scripture together, and much more. Let us prayerfully consider our own sense of wonder and gratitude as we offer our gifts to God.
God of wonder, we offer these gifts with grateful hearts. Multiply them so that others may share the wonder and joy of loving others and being loved, of fighting for justice and experiencing justice, of feeling compassion and showing compassion toward others. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, be with us as we try to make sense of your word so that we can be more loving people. Amen. So I need to start off with a little confession uh, today. I'm not a big Christmas person. Now, don't get me wrong, love the baby Jesus thing, love the spending time with family thing, but all the other stuff never quite did it for me. I have been known to shed a tear at Christmas Eve candlelit services, but all the other traditional Christmas things that have flooded our stores and TV commercials and people's front lawns just doesn't get me excited. In fact, red and green lights Silver and gold tinsel, Santa figurines, you won't find any of them at my house. What you will find, because I mean, you have to have a Christmas tree, is this. Every year for about the past decade, this is just about the only holiday decoration you will find at the Repholtz house a black Christmas tree covered in skull and cupcake ornaments with leopard tree skirt and topped with a nun Barbie. Yes, that is a nun Barbie that was custom made that my family found for me many years ago. Because who would ever peg me as a traditionalist, huh? So friends, even though uh, Christmassy stuff isn't my thing, I do love ritual and family and community traditions. 
and one of the most beloved ones in my family that I have continued to this day with my own children is something that my parents started when my brothers and I were small. Now, I'm not sure if it started off as a cute uh, tradition or was born out of necessity because of kids wanting to sneak down and see what Santa left, but every Christmas morning, we were met with the entryway to our living room where the tree and presents waited, covered from floor to ceiling with holiday wrapping paper, as if the whole room we were about to enter to receive our gifts was its own gift. We had to wait patiently on the stairs till mom could make another cup of coffee and dad could get the video camera all set up until we were told, go. And it was like the running of the bulls as we ripped and crashed through that beautiful holiday wrapping paper bursting into Christmas morning. The hope and anticipation we felt as we sat there wondering what was on the other side is something that I hold dear in my heart. There were years when my younger brother and I swore that we could see to the other side, and we even attempted to find identical wrapping paper so we could go in, take a peek, and then seamlessly wrap it all back up before mom and dad caught us. But we never followed through, because the wonder was actually more important than the knowing. The wonder kept us hopeful. The wonder made it all magical. So this year, our Advent theme is Draw Near. And as we move through this season leading up to Christmas, where we once again celebrate the birth of Christ and God entering our world and culture to walk with us, we draw near to the promise that God is always there and loves us. Over the next four weeks, we as a community will meditate on and think about what it means to draw near to something. And today, on this first Sunday of Advent, we are invited to draw near to wonder. What might it look like for us to take moments to notice the wonder around us and pay attention to the ways that God is in our midst now. What is God revealing to us? So I guess it's, it's kind of funny, or not, that the thought of wonder almost makes you just want to smile. Yet, today's scripture reading in most Bibles is entitled... The little apocalypse. That doesn't really make you want to smile, but stick with me. What we find in our reading in the Gospel of Luke is really an observation, an acknowledgement of nearness. We are told that there will be signs all around us if we just pay attention. The kingdom itself is so close if we just know where to look. It's an invitation to be on guard, stay awake. That in the season of Advent, coming from the Latin word adventus, which means arrival, we are called to pay special attention to what's going on around us. And in this little apocalyptic text, we get one of my favorite parables.
parables, even though people argue about whether this is actually a parable or not. The parable isn't really a story per se, like what we normally get from Jesus. There's no little old lady searching for a coin. There's no Samaritan, no sons, no stewards. Instead, we get a fig plant and a command to look at one if we have any questions about what comes next. Jesus uses nature to help us understand that if we want to know what's about to happen next, that God has already been trying to show us in the natural world. He says, look at the fig tree. As soon as they start to sprout leaves, you can see for yourself that summer is near. In a beautiful way, Christ is almost telling us to stop looking for the big things and step back and look for the little things happening in our midst. This might just be the Christian equivalent of stop and smell the roses, not in a passive, sleepy invitation to slow down, but rather an invitation to really look at the changes and growth in nature to understand what God is up to. As if God is whispering to us, I'm working on it, but I need you to be ready. If we are wondering what in God's name is going on, we really need to work on learning how to be in awe. Now, if you have children or grandchildren or have been around kids, you know that if toddlers are in the house, silence is very suspect. Recently, I was standing in the kitchen with my youngest, Titus, while Malachi, my three-year-old, was in the next room. All of a sudden, I noticed how quiet it was. At first, it was nice, and then the panic set in, and I heard, Mommy! Well, I don't think I've ever moved that quickly in my entire life, and as I ran into the room expecting to find something broken, Malachi was looking out the window. What is wrong? I said. And as he looked at me with confusion, he said, come look. And as he pointed his gorgeous little finger at something outside the window, I saw it. A beautiful blue jay was sitting right outside the window. As my heart began to slow down a little bit, I looked over at his face. It was just beaming with joy. Isn't it beautiful, Mommy? And as my gaze stayed on his little face, filled with wonder, I said, it is, Malachi, it is. It seems like little ones are more attuned to wonder than we are. Think about how long it takes to go on a simple walk with a child or a new puppy. Not only do they want to stop and smell everything or pick up every leaf and flower, they seem to notice more about the journey than we adults. Everything seems new and wonderful. What should take probably five minutes can sometimes end up taking an hour. But to be honest, maybe we need to take a page out of their books every once in a while. In the 16th and 17th centuries, among the most prized pieces of furniture of many families, were what were called wonder cabinets. These were simply glorified knick-knack shelves 
and were dedicated to displaying collections of natural wonders. Our ancestors used to go what they called marveling in the world. They would intentionally take time and go outside and just pay attention. They would look around at what God had created and come back with four-leaf clovers, shimmering seashells, and rocks. These wonder cabinets were not trophy cases to display winnings or things that we humans have overpowered, but rather served as reminders of how amazing the world is. The owners of these wonder cabinets understood that paying attention to nature can help ground us and help cultivate an awareness of the world that when we are open to wonder, it will certainly find us. So while giant wonder cabinets aren't really a thing anymore, and since I am in this season of my life where tiny humans have taken over my house, there is a modern day version of these cabinets. What is one of the most important rules of toddler laundry? Check the pockets. Because those long walks with children and puppies sometimes result in items making their way back to your house. I recently discovered this photographer who has a small child in her home as well, who began photographing what was found in tiny pockets at the end of the day. From sticks and flowers to deflated balloons and gold pipe cleaner wrapped tongue depressors, each item filled with wonder was deemed worthy enough to hold on to. And in this photo series, we are reminded of just how beautiful, simple objects all around us can be that wonder is there if we just look close enough. So over the past few months, I have had the honor of being a part of developing and implementing our new Early Life Ministries program, Faith Lab for Holy Troublemakers. Each week, our elementary and middle school students gather right over there in our chapel to learn more about God. The first half of our time together includes a mystery question, some music, a science experiment, and a scripture lesson. And then we transition into the second part. The middle school youth go off with Toby, and the elementary students hear the story of a different person each week that have done beautiful things because of their faith on behalf of love and justice. We have talked about several incredible people so far, including Miriam Molkara, a Muslim trans activist, Caitlin Curtis, a young woman attempting to make sense out of her Christian identity and her experience as a member of the Potawatomi people, and Rumi, the Sufi mystic who used poetry and art to help guide himself and others through grief. Today, our young people are learning the story of one of my matron saints, Mary Oliver. If you do not know her or know her poetry, do yourself a favor and look her up as soon as this worship service is over. Mary Oliver, who just died in 2019, lived most of her life in Provincetown, Massachusetts with her beloved, the photographer Molly Malone Cook. It was a beautiful backdrop for over 40 years of her life, but it didn't start off so picturesque for Oliver. As a child, she was the victim of sexual abuse, 
and struggled for many years from recurring nightmares and darkness that seeped its way into everyday life. To counteract and heal from this traumatic childhood, she found comfort and joy in nature. As the years went on, she found herself reflecting on everything she saw and experienced. She described this practice as simply paying attention. And what she discovered was that the natural world has a lot to show and teach us about God. By keeping her eyes and ears open to where the spirit was leading her, she often found animals like deer and grasshoppers or marveled at the way the light seemed to dance on top of lakes. That through the wonders all around, she was able to connect to the divine and connect to something deep inside herself that was planted there at the beginning of time. Known to hide pencils and notebooks behind trees and under rocks, just in case she came upon something amazing, she wrote poems for herself and all of us to use in the moments when we feel disconnected or unsure about the future. Oliver writes this. Prayer has always been an odd thing for me. I never quite knew if I should close my eyes, fold my hands, but when I go for a walk in the woods and hear the birds or feel the breeze rustling through the trees, that's prayer. That's where I feel close to God. We all wonder about God but I find my answers in nature. Mary Oliver knew the thing that children and puppies seem to already know. And that's if we pay attention, stay alert, stay awake to the world, God is already drawing near to us. One of her most famous poems, which was posted all over social media after her death two years ago, is the one that I always think of when I hear the parable of the fig tree from our scripture this morning. The Summer Day is a poem that reminds us to pay attention. It begins with questions. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? I mean, the one who flung herself out of the grass, the one eating sugar out of my hand, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. And then Oliver ends the poem with this. I don't know exactly what prayer is, but I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down in the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have done all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your wild and precious life? Earlier in the service, we participated in one of our church traditions, the lighting of the Advent wreath. Today it was the hope candle, and goodness, aren't hope and wonder just so beautifully connected? Because we Christians need both. As we pay attention, yes, we will find some really incredible things, but we also meet some challenging things. The world is not the kingdom yet. There is pain and struggle in our midst, but the hope and wonder keep us from hiding our eyes from the world. Hope and wonder propel us forward, and in this season of Advent, as we prayerfully prepare to again welcome Christ, we 
We're called to do it with intention. We are invited to hold hope in our pockets and wonder if there's more to all of this. We pay attention even when it's hard because we know that God is drawing near to us as we draw near to them. I believe that our invitation is to resurrect wonder cabinets, to go on more walks in the woods, and to look for grasshoppers and blue jays right outside of our window. Jesus tells us the parable of the fig tree not so that we can 2,000 years later debate on who we are in the story or whatever, like most of the parables we get, but rather as a simple reminder that the signs of life and hope and wonder are already here if we just stop and look for them. When was the last time you said, wow, or just walked down the street and picked up leaves and marveled at them? When was the last time you paid attention to the ordinary wonders all around you? Warning. Once you start doing this, you may also have to start checking your pockets before doing the laundry. But what an amazing problem to have. Amazing things are coming, but amazing things are already here now. Stop and stay awake. Pay attention. The signs are all around us. What is it you plan to do with your wild and precious life? Happy Advent, friends. Let's wonder together. Amen. the season of Advent, we as a community are going to be drawing near to things. Today, we are invited to draw near to wonder. Go outside, look around at all of the incredible things that are already here so that we can be prepared for what is coming next. Happy Advent. Amen. <laughs>